Hello and welcome to Start Learning Wheels. And before we begin, I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. Now in this video course we will talk about the so-called wheel numbers R. If you want to do calculus or analysis, R is the most important number set. Indeed you need it everywhere there, hence you should really have a good understanding what the wheel numbers actually are and why we use them. The starting point for us will be the rational numbers Q. However, here you don't need to know the construction of Q or all the other videos where we talked about the rational numbers. We only need the result that we have such a nice number set Q. More concretely, in Q we have all the fractions and they form a so-called field. So we have the addition and the multiplication with a lot of nice properties. Moreover, in addition we have an ordering with nice features and one important one is the so-called Archimedean property. Hence it makes sense to say that we have positive numbers x greater than 0 and negative numbers x less than 0. And by having this we can define a very important map. It's called the absolute value and it is defined for all rational numbers. And the common notation one uses is just given by bars around the number x. Now for positive numbers the absolute value shouldn't change anything. So we just have x for numbers that are greater or equal than 0. On the other hand if we have a negative number we want to change the sign. Therefore there we would take minus x. Here please recall this denotes the inverse element of x with respect to the addition. Hence what we get out of the absolute value is always a positive number or 0. So maybe a visualization on the number line is helpful here. Now if we have a positive number x, the absolute value tells us what we have to add to 0 to get to this number. On the other hand, if we have a negative number x, the absolute value tells us what we have to add to this number to get to 0. Or to put it in other words, in both cases the absolute value gives us the distance between x and 0. So if you want to know how far away x is from 0, you just take the absolute value. Ok, so this measuring of distances will be very important for our construction of the real numbers. However, now at this point you might rightfully ask why we even want new numbers. Of course, in every region we choose on the number line we have infinitely many rational numbers there. Still, there are points on the number line that are not in the set Q. For example, we don't find a rational number x that fulfills that x times x, so x squared, is equal to 2. Indeed, showing this is a good exercise which is often presented when you start with the real numbers. However, here you should see that this result is a little bit strange, because we don't have a problem when there is a 1 or a 4 on the right hand side. In addition, what you also find are rational numbers that are very close to this hypothetical x. For example, let's start with x1, which should be 14 over 10. Of course, this would be the same as 7 over 5. And there you see, this leads us to x1 squared is equal to 49 divided by 25. Of course, this is not 2, but it's very close. However, it gets even better when we choose another fraction we call x2. This is 141 over 100. So let's square this as well, but of course there we get large numbers in numerator and denominator. Nevertheless, the important part is that we are again close to 2. Then in the next step I want to increase the denominator again and then find a fraction x3 such that the square is even closer to 2. Ok, so maybe let's skip x3 and x4 and let's discuss x5 in detail. So there we have 100,000 in the denominator, so squaring that gives us 10 billion. But of course the interesting part is the numerator and there we see we are very close to 2. Indeed closer than ever, for example you can compare it with x2. Now at this point you should see that we could continue this whole procedure as long as we want. And the other important part you should see here is that the distance between two members gets smaller and smaller. 
of course the distance we can measure with the absolute value of the difference. So having this nice approximation here, you could ask yourself why this whole procedure does not yield a solution in the end. The answer is that the rational numbers miss a property that has something to do with such limits here. However, if we want to do calculus or analysis, we really need this property. Therefore, we have to expand the number set even more. Before we do that, let's formulate our example here in an abstract sense. So what we consider is an infinite sequence of numbers denoted by xn. And n goes through all natural numbers starting with 1. This one is the common notation one uses for this and as you can see it's just an ordered infinite list of numbers. Or formally you would say it's a map from n into q. However, it shouldn't be just any sequence of numbers. We want to have the property that the distance between the members gets smaller and smaller. To correctly formulate this, we would choose any small number epsilon and then we would have an index capital N such that for all other indices n and m we would have the following. If epsilon is a positive number and n, m are greater than the capital N, then this implies that the distance between the members xn and xm is always less than epsilon. Now because this is hard to read in this way, we usually shorten that by pushing these two inequalities to the left hand side. The meaning is the same as before, no matter how small a positive number is, we always find an index such that all sequence members afterwards lie closer than epsilon to each other. In order to get an idea for this, let's look at the number line again. The important thing to note is that we have infinitely many sequence members, so maybe they accumulate here. The property from above now means that you can always choose any small section of the line where the distance from left to right is just given by epsilon and then only finitely many members could lie outside. The crucial part here is that you can make this epsilon as small as you want and this still holds. In other words, this correctly describes the limit process we had above. Therefore, the sequences with this property will be important for getting the real numbers. For this reason, they get a special name, we call them Cauchy sequences. So a Cauchy sequence is just a sequence of rational numbers that satisfies this property here. Now when you see this picture, you might think that there should be a point we should call a limit point. However, we have seen with our example of the square root of 2 that this is not the case in general. Now this wish to have it for all Cauchy sequences is what leads us to the real numbers in the end. So you see, we have a lot to do, therefore I hope I see you in the next video. Have a nice day and bye!